Hi, I'm Becca and today I'm going to show you how to make a visual search task inside PsychoPy using code components. Now, this is a task where you don't necessarily have to use code components, but it certainly can make life a little bit easier. Uh, for example, imagine I've got a simple T's and L's task, which is what we're going to make together today. Um, it might be that I have one target, but I have a hundred distractors. Now, this is a case where we do find lots of people might move towards wanting to make their experiment in code simply because they don't want to go to the effort of adding 100, co 100 normal like letter components inside PsychoPy. And this is totally understandable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you could do this using code. Um, and also, if you're not familiar with code, this is a really good kind of first start a task for seeing how you can make the most of compiling a builder experiment to uh, script and pinching bits of code essentially uh, to make what you want. So what I'm going to do is first of all just imagining I want a simple T's and L's task. I'm going to first of all just make one instance of my, uh, my target, in this case it's going to be a letter T, uh, and one case of my distractor, in this case it's going to be a letter L. So what I'll do is I'll just go to stimuli and I'm going to add a text component um, and I'm going to start by uh, calling this uh, target. The duration of these stimuli don't necessarily matter too much to me at the moment, but I am going to make it infinite, imagining that I want my participant to be able to search on the screen until they find that target. So I've just made one instance of target and now I'll do the same for distractor. This one's going to be a letter L. And I'm going to make sure I put this in a different location just to begin with so that I know, OK, these two things are going to present on the screen. They're going to look how I want them to look. Um, I've just pressed run there just to uh, first of all, just double check that my stimuli look how I want them to uh, before I start trying to pinch bits of code. There we go. I've got a letter T. I've got a letter L. OK, so now I imagine what I want is I actually want anything up to 100 letter L's. Now, what I could do is I could just add lots and lots of different text components. But as I say, this video today is going to be more about how we can use code components in order to achieve this goal. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to compile our experiment to Python. Now, this little blue and yellow snake at the very top of your PsychoPy builder indicates that you uh, could do this into Python. What we're going to do today, you could do exactly the same in JavaScript if you wanted to push an experiment online. I'm just focusing on the Python side of this today, but just know that this logic applies to if you were to take something online as well. So I've just compiled that to Python, and this is my experiment under the hood. Um, I'm not going to stay too long in this screen. What I am going to do is I'm going to search for my distractor stimulus. So I've just command F that. And here we go. Here is how my distractor is made inside in code. Now, this is actually compiling experiments to Coder is a really useful way to get started if you're kind of interested in learning Python, because you can have a peek under the hood at any time at how things are made. You don't necessarily need to be a Python expert in order to know how to do that. Uh, just then we literally just compiled and then did a search. What I've done is I've just copied that little text, um, that piece of code there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a code component to my builder view. So what I'm going to do is look for a code component. Mine is in my favorites, but you might find yours inside custom. Um, so I can click on this here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in this case to the begin routine tab. And I'm just going to paste that distractor code. So here I could, in theory, just make a text stimulus in code without having to add a component. So this is essentially what we're going to take advantage of in order to make as many distractors as we want. So let's start by adding some uh, code around this. I'm going to start by thinking about uh, how many distractors or the number of uh, distractors that we want. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a variable called n distractors. Um, let's start just with 10. We can move on to 100, but the principle is going to be the same. What I'm then going to want is I'm going to want a list of distractors to draw. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Python coding, a list is just indicated by this open and closed square brackets. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into a loop. So we're essentially, we don't want to just make one distractor. 
we want to make 10 of them. Um, now, rather than just copying and pasting this piece of code 10 times, that's where we're going to wrap this inside a for loop. So in Python, that's simply just done by saying for, let's say for i in uh, range n distractors. And then what's super duper important, if you're not a Python coder already, um, you might not know this. Um, so do make sure that you indent everything that you want inside your loop. Um, so I've just highlighted everything and pressed the tab uh, and that has automatically indented that whole chunk of code for me. And I now know that this is performed within this loop because I'll see this little, uh, it might be a little bit small on the screen, uh, but this minus sign. And what I can see is if I was to, um, well, if I look at the line that follows that, that encompasses everything that belongs to my for loop. So what, I, what this loop is doing is it's going around 10 times and making the same uh, text stimulus 10 times. What we're not yet doing is storing each of those text stimuli we make to our list, and that's super important. So what we want to do is once we've made our uh, text stim in our loop, we're actually going to say uh, distractors, which is the name of our list. Um, actually, just to make sure I don't make spelling mistakes, I'll just copy and paste that. And I'm going to say dot append, which will add something to my list. And what I'm going to add is the distractor stimulus. Now that's going to add 10 things to this list. So as we're going around that loop, we're making a new letter L and we're adding it to the list. Okay, so the final thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we can draw those things. So what we're going to do finally is we are going to say uh, for distractor in distractor. So this is a slightly different uh, way of using a loop in Python if you're not familiar with using loops. We can either iterate through a range, so say I just want to do this thing 10 times, or we can iterate through a list of things. Now what that means is that each time I go through this loop, distractor is going to correspond to the thing in that current position in the list. So what that means is I can just then draw that thing in the list. So I'm going to say distractor dot set auto draw true. And what that means is that's going to draw that stimulus every time my window is refreshed until I tell it to stop drawing. So what I am going to need to do is once my routine is finished, make sure that I essentially call this uh, again but say false. I want to undraw my stimuli. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this loop. I'm going to go to the end routine. I'm pasting that and I'm just replacing the true here with the false. So I'm undrawing my stimuli at the end of my routine. Okay, so let me just re return back to my begin routine tab here. Um, now, one thing is at the moment, all of my letter L's are going to be in the same location which means they're going to be a bit tricky to see uh, that I've actually made several things because they're all going to be overlapping each other. So what I'm going to do here, just to pick for now just a random location of those uh, letters, is I'm actually going to use the Python function random. Uh, this does actually translate into Python, that function does, I believe. Where are we? Uh, into JavaScript, I mean. Oh, I'll look, I'll look back at that later. Maybe we'll do another video in terms of getting this one online. Um, but right, random will generate a random number between uh, 0 and 1. So what that means is if I use random in the x position of my position and random in the y position of my position, that's going to essentially uh, cluster all of my stimuli in the top right hand corner because they're all going to be positive values. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, kind of scipy coordinate spaces just yet, uh, zero, zero, or zero is in the middle, negative is to the left or at the bottom, and positive is upwards and to the right. So at the moment, if I'm generating a random number between zero and one for my x and for my y, everything is going to be offset um, to the top right, and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to subtract 0.5 from each of these values just so that they're more centered around the middle. Uh, remember that I am using height units here. Uh, I'll add a link to PsychoPy units to the description of this video in case you're curious about that. 
Uh, but for now, all we need to know is this should do the trick in generating 10 random letter L's uh, in random locations and drawing them for us. So what I'm going to do just to check that is I'm going to click OK. I can now actually remove my distractor uh, stimulus that I made in the first instance there. Uh, I kind of used it for what I want now. Uh, I compiled the code, pinched the code under the hood, um, and now I've put it in a loop so that I can make 10 of those things rather than just one. And there we have it. We've got a number of different L's. Uh, one of them is going off the screen here, so maybe I want to kind of narrow uh, the range of my coordinates. Also, at the moment, my target's always going to be in the middle, so maybe I want to put that in a random location as well. So let's start by doing that. I'll just put my target in a random location. Um, to do that, I'm just going to say random and random. Now, what I will say about this method of making a visual search, um, I'm saying set every repeat, so it'll be a, the fresh, uh, fresh at the start of each trial. What um, With this method that we're using, we're not present, preventing overlaps in our letters. So that would be a little bit more involved. It might be that we do feed in a preset of co number of coordinates in a list or something like that. But for now, this is going to do the trick in terms of making a very simple visual search task. Now, what our participant doesn't have just yet is a means of responding. Um, so let's add in, let's go for a mouse response. And let's say we want a valid click to end the routine. And by valid click, we mean a click on the target. And then in terms of saving the data, I'm actually going to save the date data on the valid click as well. So that means I'll get the response time that they click on the target, um, as well as the location of that target as well. OK, now I see I've just set my mouse to last one second, which isn't a very long period of time for me to respond. So let me just make sure that duration is infinite as well. And let's try that again. Um, so hopefully now I should see my 10 L's. Uh, my T should be in a random location as well, making it a bit trickier. Um, and I should be able to click on the T in order to respond. OK, now where is my T? Um, oh, I didn't minus 0.5 from the, from the coordinates, did I? So it's probably off somewhere in the top right. So let's just center those coordinates again. Here we go. And actually, if we're giving it another go, let's also, let's add 50 distractors. Um, we can do that easy enough. And it's much faster than adding 50 components, because if you want to change just the font, the font size of those 50 components, oh my goodness, I've made a tricky task. There we go. And I was able to click. Lovely. Um, so hopefully this shows you a way of getting started with code components, um, in this case, uh, in the context of a visual search task. Here we have just one trial, but what we could do in theory if you wanted is you could add a loop around that and then maybe feed in a spreadsheet where you have a different number of distractors on each trial. So you could say something like, um, OK, we could have a column. Oops here that says number of distractors could be n distract. We feed that into our loop and then all we would need to do in our code would be to use that variable here. So you could have a different number of distractors on every trial. I won't go into that in this video, but perhaps we'll do it in another one depending on how interesting you find this. Um, if you'd like to know more, please do uh, comment um, and ask questions in the comment section as well. Um, but I hope that this was helpful. Um, thank you very much. And um, I'll see you in other tutorials.